Moving on to the next coming attraction, industrial hemp. Obviously, this is not uh, something very new, has been uh, used for millennia, in fact, almost 10,000 years maybe, based on the evidences, historic evidences. Uh, hemp, uh, I'm sure most of you heard, is the same species as cannabis, so it gets a lot of... Uh, restrictions in some countries like US which is in fact restricting hemp but uh, allowing recreational and medical marijuana in more and more states and uh, regions like Washington DC. Uh, the argument here is not so much as a new coming attraction but as a way that hemp, industrial hemp could still replace cotton and save a lot on water, pesticides, land use, uh, emissions and so on. So hemp fiber has been used for thousands of years to make sailcloth, rope, twine, clothing. It feels like linen but it can be combined to have the same texture as cotton. People love the, the sense of cotton. Hemp outproduces cotton or trees by a factor of 10 to 100 times in terms of yielding uh, usable fiber. So there are many studies comparing cotton and hemp in terms of environmental footprints. I'll show one of them. This site I found is called the Ministry of Hemp. Well, obviously they love hemp. They talk about uh, hemp, hemp seeds, hemp oil, uh, hemp uh, clothes, uh, hemp shoes, sunglasses, uh, and there are some 90 products they list. And one of the most exciting one they listed is this car made, I think, in Florida by someone uh, from hemp. Uh, how amazing is that? So there you go. Um, this report from uh, Stockholm uh, it compares the Stockholm Environmental Institute, I think, compares uh, cotton and hemp and uh, polyester and it actually gives some interesting data in terms of water use and overall glo uh, environmental footprint. <clears throat> Obviously, China and India have dominated cotton production and cotton fiber production for a long time. Indian cotton, best of it always got exported and in India what uh, you would look for is export quality cotton shirts and so on and so forth. But uh, if you look at just uh, megajoules per ton of spun fiber. These are several case studies that this uh, report does, uh, looking at various places like Punjab, USA, uh, and so on, and Europe. And it looks at crop cultivation and fiber production, so energy used, total energy used. Uh, and you can see that the story is not so simple when you look at it this way, except that polyester obviously uh, stands out uh, as much, much higher than uh, either hemp or cotton. So if you look at organic cotton in Punjab and the USA, there are slight differences in how much energy goes into crop cultivation versus fiber production in the two countries, uh, then traditional versus uh, uh, other uh, methods, improved methods. Uh, cotton, if you look at uh, and um, let's see what else copper uh, cotton in the USA cotton in Punjab again differences in how much energy goes into cultivation versus uh, fiber production and so on so overall you can see that there is not much uh, difference in terms of energy in this kind of a metric but if you look at carbon dioxide emissions do you see something well you see organic uh, cotton is low uh, in the US but uh, high in Punjab compared to the US so even though energy used are different the kilogram of CO2 per ton of spun fiber overall is higher in Punjab and hemp is almost the same even though the difference occurs in cultivation between cotton and organic cotton and organic hemp so traditional uh, hemp takes more than organic hemp uh, overall uh, cotton takes more than that uh, when it's not organic uh, and so on. So again, nothing stands out other than that uh, 
the polyester is much higher in this case uh, in terms of emissions as well but there is a distinction to be made in terms of uh, how it is how much energy and emission happens in cultivation versus uh, fiber production so cotton does require massive amount of fertilizers uh, water and uh, hemp also requires deeper nutrient rich soil and it's not cheap by uh, any means but what stands out here is if you look at global hectares per ton of spun fiber, so look at it as ecological footprints, then you see that uh, hemp is uh, low here uh, at 1.5 uh, hectare per ton of uh, fiber, uh, and organic uh, hemp is up here. Polyester is down here for Europe, but polyester for USA is up here. But you can see that the cotton now jumps out for both uh, USA uh, in terms of organic and uh, the regular cotton. So organic cotton USA is also higher than hemp. So hemp is uh, generally lower in the overall environmental footprint when you consider the overall cost of crop cultivation and fiber production. So in other words, the story is not very simple, but yet the message is clear that industrial hemp could uh, replace cotton as a more environmentally friendly replacement for fiber in many many applications other than the aesthetics that people look for in terms of the feel uh, of cotton. There are also differences in the way they hold color, the dyes and so on and so forth. I won't go into the uh, details here but the main message is again that as a coming attraction industrial hemp has the potential to replace cotton and reduce environmental footprint and CO2 emissions and hence it's part of the drawdown as a com uh, as a coming attraction